Hey there, welcome back. This is part 12 of my WebDriver IO tutorial series. In this video, we will learn some effective ways to optimize our test. First, we will look at some examples on how we can create utility helper functions to optimize our code and make it more reusable. Second, we will learn how we can set base URL in a configuration so that we don't need to hard code our URLs. Third, we will move all our tests to a separate resources file to make it easier to change it in future. So let's dive right into it. So I'm going to open up our search file and we created this browser.wait until command in our previous video. Now let's say if you want to reuse this code for some other scenario where we are updating a new text that's getting updated. What typically what you can do is like copy this and then here just update the text to some other text and over here we're going to do the same thing change it here. But if you notice we are reusing this entire code here. I mean this would technically work but there's a lot of duplication of code that's happening here. Wouldn't it be better if we can just create one liner code which we can then reuse anywhere we want. So there is a way to do this. So I'm, let me just remove this and give it a change. Okay. So what we can do is create our helper functions that will allow us to reuse our code in multiple places. So to do that let's go to our test folder and create a new folder called utilities and here we can create a helper file. So this is a generic helper file which we can use to store all our code. So let's create a helper function here. So what we can do is do export const and then name this let's say wait for text change and then I'm going to create a function. So what do we need for this function? So if you look here there are a couple of items we're changing. First we are verifying that we need this element. Second we need to know this text and then third we need this timeout the number of time we have to wait for this to actually run. So we're gonna these are the dynamic values and everything else will remain same. So what we can do is copy this entire thing and paste it here and then change the dynamic values over here. So we can create an element here. I can name this L. We also need our text, so I'll name this text, and then we need a timeout. So we'll do that, and we'll replace that over here to element.getText, change this to just our text, and then timeout we can change this to timeout. Or since uh, in JavaScript advanced, we can even remove this and then keep it this way. Okay, so this is our helper function, and now let's reuse this in our code. So I'm going to copy this and then paste it here. Notice I'm auto importing this over here. So if you scroll all the way up, it imported our utility helper function. And then over here, what we need to do is now pass in our element, which is this. And then we need to pass in our text, which is this line over here. And we need to pass in our timeout. So see how it's giving us all the hint here. That's the video of VS Code. Okay, so we created our helper function here. Now let's try to run this test to see if it works. Okay, so our test ran and it worked successfully. This was our last test that we updated and it's working. Awesome, so if you notice we converted that four or five line of code into a single line here. That's the beauty of using helper functions. So helper functions are really powerful. You can basically convert your multiple line of code into a single line of code and then reuse it in many places. Now let's say if you have a test again, we can just come in here, change the text over here to whatever we want, change the timeout maybe, and then that's it. And we can update our element over here too. That's all we need to do instead of copying this entire line of code over here. So this is really helpful and we can start using this in other places too. So let's take a look at another example now. So let's head over to our watches test. And if you see in our before block, we are doing wait for displayed and click. So there might be many other instances where you need to wait for something and then click on that particular thing. So instead of writing that two line of code every time, we can just copy this, create a helper function of that name it export uh, const wait and click and then same thing we'll do element 
and we don't need text here we just need timeout and then paste that here so we don't need this watches page you want to keep it generics so we'll just say element dot wait for displayed and timeout you can remove this it can be anything that we are passing in over here and then same thing element dot click I'll remove this from it okay now we can come go back to our test replace this with just this actually let me do this pass in our element then we can pass in our timeout so let's say five seconds and then delete from here that's it that's all we need to do uh, one thing we didn't do is actually import this so I'll use VS code to import now let's run a test to see if it works so before running I have to update my configuration file so I'll change this to watches.js and now let's run a test okay so as expected our test passed nice so if you see in our helper function we created our wait for text change and wait and click this way you can keep adding more helper functions in here to optimize your code all right so let's take a look at our next optimization so what we're going to do is if you notice in our pages we are using ebay.com over here same thing we're using it over here so instead of doing that every time let's go to our configuration and we have something called base url so right now it's set up to localhost let's update it to our ebay.com okay now what we can do is in our pages file instead of passing it all of this url here we can just pass this so it's going to access the root path which is our base url here ebay.com we can do the same thing in our watches page remove this and update it here now let's say if you want to open up a different url we can just add in watches here for example and what it will do is ebay.com put that over here in the beginning and then add watches in front so we can use this instead of typing the entire url ebay.com slash watches so this is a really nice quick optimization that we could do let's run a test to see if it's worked All right, great. So our tests are working as expected. Perfect. Now let's take a look at our next optimization that we can do. Let's go back to our tests now. So I'm going to open up a search test. So over here, if you notice, we are opening up the main URL and verifying the title and we are hard coding the title here. Same thing. I think we're hard coding it over here too. And then we have some couple other places where we are adding page specific content in our test. So these page specific text, we it doesn't make sense to put it over here ideally what you can do is create a separate file and then just store it there so let's do that what i'm going to do is create a, a folder call it resources so any of our resources which are page specific we can keep it here so i'll just do index.js and then over here let's start with our search page uh, search test so we have this title here so this is since this is our main title i'm gonna just copy this and then maybe name this first of all export default so that we have access it outside and maybe name this home title and paste it here and same thing what we can do is this is another one of our title so we can copy and paste it over there too so maybe name this i don't know anything like laptop title once again you can name this better i'm sure okay so now let's update this in our search file so that's really easy to do what we can just do is call our resources so if you notice i am importing this over here so now we can do resources dot and then our title here home title so I can do resources dot home title and that's it instead of adding the entire text here I'm just calling it directly from here same thing we can update it over here actually not this this one 
resources dot what did we name that laptop title laptop title there you go now let's try to run this to see if this works for us make sure this is for search js and let me run this now so there you go it worked perfect now the best part of this is we are not hard coding any of the text page related text in our test here we can i mean so for this one i think this is just a value we are adding in our input i think it's a bit of an overkill to put it in our um resources file only try to add those which are page specific content this is we are just adding for our test so that's okay for example this one over here you can kind of put it up in your index resources file i'm going to leave this up to you to do it um, if we go back to our watches test so let's go there watches test and close everything else oops so this is another one of the good examples which we can put in our resources file since this is specific to our page only so I can do this by just naming it watches category list and paste that here. And now we can obviously access this directly. Just doing resources dot watches category list. Perfect. So this makes our test nice and short. We can do the same for the other places too. Maybe move the URL away. Um, technically, we shouldn't even be using this URL because this was promotional 4th of July. So you know what, let's make this change. We updated it in our chai.js file. So I'm gonna go down here and then just copy this and update this to this one. I think we're already using chai expect here. Yep, we are. Okay, perfect. So this way uh, we don't have to worry about that hard-coded URL that we put in here. This is when you click on that button, it will go to the new URL and it should have this fashion text in there. So this should work for us almost all the time. Okay, let's try to run a test so to see if it works. Okay, so our test ran and it passed. Great. Okay, so let's do like a quick recap. So we created a couple of helper functions which we used in our test. So these are our helper functions we created. We then reuse them in our test over here. We also set a base URL in our configuration file. So if I search for that, so we set it over here so that we don't have to keep hard coding our URL everywhere in our test. And then we moved all our page specific text to our specific resources file over here. So that once again, we don't have to hard code it in our test. So these were some quick optimizations that we did. That made our test a lot more readable now okay so in our next video we will learn how we can do cross browser testing by running a test in firefox so far we have already been running it in chrome we will now run it in firefox also all right guys if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and also make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more content like this that's it for this video folks i will see you in the next one